Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Young Life Podcast. We're so glad you join us with us. Uh, join with us. There we go. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm the Young Life Pastor here at Mapleview, and I'll let our cast introduce themselves. My name is Aiden. I am a part-time st- student at Vanguard College Online, and I am a part-time streamer on Twitch. Look at him go. Wow. Uh, go for it. Uh, my name's Elliot. I'm the host of the Open Consoles podcast that comes out every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Awesome. My name's Shake and Jake Stanley, or you can just call me Jake. I work at Life 100.3. I'm on air and on the street team. You know these guys. We've been doing this for 10 episodes, which maybe that's a Ooh. small landmark, but in my mind, that's a landmark. Big. That's a big landmark. We're always honored that you guys would join us. And, you know, we kind of, we've made the call that while the stay at home order is in place, we are going to stay at home what a novel idea uh we're going to stick it uh online we're going to hang out we have young life small group happening on sunday nights jody speck is also doing a small group for the ladies on thursday nights but just while the stay at home order is in place we'll be meeting online and when it's lifted i cannot wait to be back and in person and you know i think it's something to look forward to we always need something to look forward to but alas uh, maybe along that same line, have you ever asked the question, why is God testing me? Or why does it feel like God's testing me? And that is what we're talking about tonight and how God takes some of the most challenging moments in our life and he redeems them for good things in and through our lives. I've never been a test guy. I, I know I might look very academic. It's not really my deal, but uh, I love school, hate tests. Are you guys test mm-hmm. people? Are you school bodies? Like, what was your best class, worst class? Um, for me, uh, I loved, uh, I played the alto sax through high school, like elementary school hey, and through high go. school. That's what I'm saying. I, I, played a mean, I played a mean sax, but... Um, Careless whispers. But my worst class, like, throughout high school, I took applied math through high school. I was, it was, I was terrible at it. My highest mark ever was a 64 so that's right <laughs> poor, poor jake <laughs> it is what it is i feel you i feel you dude go for it yeah. Aiden. what's um, your best class worst class man my best class was definitely probably drama and uh oh, drama and don't music I know it. it's 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 a, it's a tie between drama and music man they were they were so easy in high school i would just show up and like just Oh man, it, it was a breeze. It was great. A- actually, <laughs> I did go to a play once where yeah. Aiden played King Arthur and spam a lot. Oh, it was great. Monty and Python. He was, he was really good, actually. It was really good. You show up to a was... high school play, you never know what to expect. And mm. I, I had a good man. laugh. That was hands down my favorite class in high school. Just being able to go to school every day and just act and and would you like to recite lines and recite oh, some? Oh, uh... oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. If you want to um, see it, you have to watch his Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you got to watch my Twitch special There's segment. Your There's your yeah. plug. No, my my worst class though was definitely science. I got like a sixty in both grade nine and ten science, and right after grade ten, I was like, I don't need to take this anymore. I'm not taking it. And I was just, man, science was brutal for me. Uh, heck, everyone's saying their worst marks for 60s. I feel like my story right now is going to be trash. Uh, <laughs> I got my my favorite class or my best class that I did was definitely music as well. Music yeah. and French, which I am yeah. in university for. And then my worst was math. It was just a steady decline of just, let's say my best. 95, got, 90, <laughs> 82, no. 80, just like, oh. Right no. the heart, just... best my best mark in math was in grade nine i got a 56 oh you know, yeah just declined, then to a 53 Oof. then in grade 11 i got a 49 but i got that one percent to pass with a 50 well, I'm saying. And, and then advanced functions i got a 23 so percent that was <laughs> yeah. that was trash but well, i replaced I, 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 repla- I replaced oh, that man. mark with my music mark which i got a 90 in so there you go we're all good we're all good we graduated (laughs) it's It's all good it's all good my best class in high school you could take like communications technology course at the school i went to so like photoshop and video editing i love doing that that was probably my best course hands down actually i used to have an economics teacher i don't think this is legal but he'd come in and he'd have printed an article uh from like cbc or bbc on like something world economics he'd give it out to everybody and say give me a page of notes on this and if you gave him a page of notes, he gave you a hundred percent for the day. Wait, 
Yeah, there you go. I'm telling you, I, I, Michaela, and I, Michaela had them too at some point, and because Michaela and I went to high school at the same time, same high school, and I was like, I, I think in retrospect, this is not okay, and like it was, it became the class people took to get a hundred percent. Yeah, like you just had to courses. take notes in the class. So probably economics was maybe my best course. Yeah, and my worst one is is kind of like math, but I took chemistry because I thought it'd be fun to do all the labs in grade mm -hmm. eleven. <laughs> and I, it's pretty much just math with letters. Like it's, it's terrible. <laughs> like it's yeah. so terrible. Mm -hmm. And I bombed that course. Like True. absolutely bombed, like 35, like could, Yo. wasn't interested, oh. not interested, had, had to like make up the correct. It was terrible. It was absolutely Remember kids, terrible. C's get degrees. C's, C's, get, C's degrees. get degrees. That's facts. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I went to Bible college, so I can't really say anything. But, you know, <laughs> whether you're a school or a test person, you know, challenging moments in our life, it can be easy to ask the question, why me? Why me? What did I do to deserve this? And yet, not every challenging season, like the season we're in right now, it has nothing to do with you. And yet, it can be incredibly pressing, it can be incredibly hard. And uh, we've been going through the Young Life Small Group talking about the book of James. And James starts off talking about consider it a sheer gift. That's the, the message version. Or consider it sheer joy when challenges and pressures come at you from all sides. And like that is, that is a hard world to live in. No one ever considers a test a joy. <laughs> I don't think no pretty rarely. And yet James challenges us to think about the challenges in our life differently. What's the last test you guys took? Do you guys remember the last test you took? Yeah, for me, uh, I haven't had a test in a while because with my new online school, it's all essays. So those are my only assignments. But in my first year of uh, Bible university at Tyndale, I had, um, I had my exams and I remember one of my exams was, uh, was hermeneutics. And I did not study for this hermeneutics thing at all. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't study at all. And then the night before, um, I, I forgot about it completely. And I went to a concert. I went to the Lumineers concert <laughs> and then, and then I got back and realized, oh crap, I've got this exam in the morning and I was studying all night for this test. So that is a very memorable moment for me in my last test. Pass. It, <laughs> yes, I passed. I passed with like a 75. Oh it was great. And, uh, but yeah, it, uh, it took, a. I was, I was up till probably four or 5. AM. Oh, and then man. I had to test yeah. at eight 30. It was brutal. Every passage he had to use hermeneutics on, which is like translating it to yeah. contextual times. You just write, I yeah. belong with you. You belong with belong me, with me. <laughs> in my sweetheart. God is so good. That's yeah, just... <laughs> wow. The way he works his love for us. Right? <laughs> what oh, about you guys, uh, Elliot, Jake, what's the last test uh, you took? I'm in exam season right now and it's a, thankfully my last exam season. Uh, so I just had an advanced written uh, course that I just did for French. So it's all like knowing the grammar rules and, and fixing certain stuff. So that that course I was not looking forward to. Thankfully mm. though, like I didn't finish with a good mark. Like I calculated it all. And then my teacher gave me a better mark than I have, than I should have had. So I was like, Take Rock that. on! Okay. Right. Yep. Sometimes you gotta yep. fake it till you make it, Elliot. That's right. It's just, it's <laughs> not out there. What about you, yeah. Jake? What's the last test you took? Um, the last one I can remember was my G one test. Uh, that, that was, was the last test you took. Yeah, I think probably. Ooh, but sheesh, I know, sheesh. right? Tim Hortons <laughs> working in radio. <laughs> um, but I remember like you could get like this pamphlet and I remember, remember like doing the test like 30 times in one day, like just going over it. You so just many kept times. going. Oh, like a practice test. Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought you just oh, kept no, paying no. for it. Every, <laughs> no. like, I was like, Oh my I, gosh, I, dude, I, never I, drive. Yeah. Never yeah. Get my <laughs> I did my G1 test three times until I passed. <laughs> I think we, we, I know a two times that two did times it like, a, I think I did it times. twice. I think I did it twice. Yeah. But I did it twice, not three. Look, I'm the person who took chemistry because I didn't understand it was math, and I didn't study for my G1 test, and I got it. Yo. But Where'd you go, Scott. But it's mostly pictures. It's mostly pictures, I feel like. Yeah, it's like ABC kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, the last test I took, probably other than a COVID test, would be uh, I got my boating license, 
And I thought a boating license only took like five or four hours to do the course, then get the thing. It takes like 12 hours. Yeah, it's long. So, <laughs> Mikhail and I were up to like four in the morning trying to write this test and like can't even see the multiple choice. But guess who can yeah. operate a watercraft? And I'll never have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, tests. It, it's not many times that tests bring out the best in us. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like when you're under the pressure, you're under the, and people try all sorts of things in school. I'm trying to think back to when I was like studying for in my bachelor's degree, like ways that I was going to try and get the information out. You guys ever do that? You study chewing spearmint gum and then you go and do the exam and you chew spearmint gum and it's supposed to draw like oh, a correlation between no. like if, if people do everything in their power to have to get out of, uh, or at least surviving test and today we have pastor leah bennett joining us she is incredible pastor and leader hashtag girl power and uh, her life has been marked by incredible incredible challenges uh, and yet in some, in the middle of some of the most crushing moments of her life god has matured her and created in her a faith full of joy a hope and future and it's i mean i don't want to spoil really anything so uh, she's she is absolutely amazing and so tonight if you feel like the pressure is getting to you that's what tonight's about that's what we're talking about tonight we're going to get into it with leah in just a quick moment but just for that our tyl download want you check it out right now <laughs> Hey everybody, today we're asking the question, why is God testing me? Or you know, even is God testing me? You know, we have challenging moments in our life, whether it's our jobs, our relationships, our futures, etc. And it can be really easy to allow our heart to come to the place to ask the question, why me? Why me and not someone else? Why me and not uh, this person that I know is a little worse than I am? You know, as people who are believers and we go to church and we want to follow Jesus with the best of our life, Sometimes we can get in our head that, hey, well, I'm doing everything right. I'm serving God. You know, I attend church. Heck, I even give when the pastor asks me to give. I'll put my money where my mouth is. Why is this happening to me? And it can lead us to the, the place of going, is God testing me? And that's what I want to talk about tonight. I think James gives us a good picture when it comes to those moments we feel like God might be testing us. We can ask questions. Maybe over the last year, this is your story. God, why did I lose my job? God, uh, why did my plan fall apart? God, why did I get sick? Why did my family member get sick? Why did I lose that person who was so close to me? God, why would you allow this to happen? You know, they're very natural questions that we ask in our own humanity and in our own perspective. You know, when's the last time you took a test? Can you remember the last time we took a test? A few months ago in the summer, we wanted to go uh, boating and uh, sea doo riding, and Chase has these sea doos that he's gracious enough to let uh, me get on. But I wanted to drive it. I just wanted to sit on the back in girlfriend style, sit behind him and hold on to his life jacket. I wanted to ride that thing, and so I had to go get my boat license. And so I believed it would take four or five hours, not a big deal. I could just power through it. Little did I know, it's like four or five hours times three. It's like 12 hours. So we got home one night at like five o'clock, right after work. We started into it. And we were done around uh, like three, four in the morning, not understanding how much time it was going to take, but we're like, we're committed. We're going to do it. And so it's like four in the morning, three in the morning. I'm writing this thinking boating test. And it comes to the point where I'm like, look, what do I really know about boats? They float, they're in the water, and I want to drive one. That's pretty much it. And I've got these multiple choice questions in front of me going, okay, is it A, B, C, or D? And eventually I just had to come to the point where it was just like, C, C, get it? Badoots, S-E-A, aha. Uh, but I just had to blindly pick. It felt like it was just a blind choice. And you know what? Guess who's got their boating license? Captain Jack right here. Like it, sometimes there are moments in our life, it feels like we're making these blind choices. Maybe like a test that you've taken, you're like, I'm not really sure what the right answer is. So I'm just gonna try and see what the result might be. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And yet, as believers, in the book of James, God gives us a lot more confidence in trials and tribulations than that. Our life is not just a blind choice of, well, I hope it works out for the best, but God gives us wisdom. He gives us direction. And even in moments where we don't know what the option is, James tells us he's maturing and making something new in us. James chapter 1. James was the stepbrother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus. And he's speaking to this community in James 1 that knows trouble. They know trouble. 
They were one of the first Jesus communities ever in the world to get together and follow him. They faced incredible persecution for their faith. In their time, they, they faced incredible poverty and famine. Like they knew what it was like to go through challenging seasons. They understood what it meant to ask the question, God, why me? Why me? And this is what James says in chapter 1, 2 to 4. And this is the message, Eugene Peterson's uh, translation uh, and paraphrase. It says this, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. So do not try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Verse eight, uh, 5 to 8 says this, If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. Ask Him for help. He loves to help. You will get His help. You will not be condescended in asking for it. He wants to help us. Ask boldly, believing without a second thought. People who come worrying that their prayers are not going to be listened to you are not going to receive anything. And yet we can come to Him with boldness. Verse 21, anyone who meets a testing challenge, or verse 12, sorry, anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. For such persons, loyalty and love with God, the reward is life and more life. And he concludes with this before moving on to something else. Verses 16 to 18, he says, So, my very dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. There is, some, there is nothing deceitful in God, nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. He brought us into life using the true word, showing us off as the crown of all his creatures. You know, the book of James is this broad stroke teachings of wisdom. There's this mixture of the Sermon on the Mount and the book of Proverbs. And, and you see in James's writing these two influences on display. And he challenges us right off the bat. He says, consider a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come to you from all sides. James, what are you talking about? Have you been in the middle of challenges? How are they supposed to be gifts when challenges and trials and disappointment and discouragement come our way? How is that a gift? And he says it's a gift, not because it feels good, not because it's enjoyable, but it reveals in us what truly matters. It reveals to us when the heat is turned up, it burns away all the auxiliary things and it shows us what's the most important in our life. He says, don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do, it, let it do its work so you could, be, could become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. You know, when, we're, when we endure, our faith solidifies. It strengthens and it matures into something deeply held and meaningful in my life and yours. God uses moments of challenges and trial to strengthen our faith in ways that easier seasons of life can't. They just can't. Experience is the best teacher. Nothing and no moment is wasted in our lives, even though they might be hard. As we were getting ready for our new baby, Isla, to come, man, I wanted to know everything that there was to know about taking care of a baby so that when the moment came that a challenge arose, I knew exactly what to do. And that did not work. And so every once in a while, I try to, not every once in a while, I always try to give Michaela a break, but there are moments where she just needs to get out of the house. And so it's just me and the baby. It's like, there's no other option but you. If there's a problem, you got to figure it out. And you know, there have been moments that for all the knowledge and information I had in my head, when I actually got to experience the problem firsthand and had to do something about it, the experience of trying to come up with a solution and work my way through it, you know, that solidified in me what really works and what does not work. Oh, well, you, should, you ask any baby blog, there's about 10 different ways to try to sue the baby. And you know what? I found the ways that work for my baby. And similarly, you know, now I'm pro star dad. Just get that baby to sleep first try. I wish I could say that. But, you know, there's moments in our life that we have to internalize the things that we know from our head to our heart. And experience helps us do that. You know, in challenging moments in my faith, the moments that I've actually come to understand the deeper things of faith is when they've gone from head knowledge to heart knowledge. And that normally has happened in moments where I've had to live out my faith. I've actually had to live it. I've had to experience it. I've had to go through hardships. It's when God matures and grows and provides in me something more than just 
head knowledge. And so, hey, uh, next time we're asking the question, God, why me? Will we consider asking the question, God, you know what? Why not me? You know, I might be facing a challenge. I might be facing a struggle. But you know what? Why not me? I want to know that, God, you're working in me and through me. And James tells us that. We need to get our faith off the obstacle and begin to see our faith move towards the objective, that we're maturing and growing in our faith. One of the amazing things that James says is there's nothing deceitful in God, nothing two-faced and nothing fickle. He brought us to life using the true word, showing us off as a crown of all his creatures. God is not in the business of seeing you and I fail. He's in the business of picking us back up when we fail. And you know, there are moments we might feel like we're being tested by God. We might feel like He's putting the pressure on us. And I want to let you know this. God is not going to put obstacles in our way to trip us up. But He might put something in our way to help strengthen us, encourage us, and move it from head knowledge to heart knowledge. You know, there might be things in our life that are there to mature us and to grow us, but we can choose to respond in a way that says, God, I'm going to endure. I'm going to meet the challenge head on. And God, I want to come out the other side stronger than when I started. John 16, 33 says this, and this is Jesus's words. And this is Eugene Peterson, in the message translation. It says, in this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. That's what Jesus tells us. You will continue to experience challenges and difficulties. It will not always be easy, but he says, take heart because I've conquered the word, the world. Don't lose heart, but trust that God is moving us forward. Allow our endurance to mature us in a way that comfort never could. In moments when we feel like the pressures are coming in, you know, there's something to say, God, in faith, I'm choosing to believe you're maturing something in me and I'm going to endure. I love what it says earlier. Don't prematurely try to get out of anything that God might be using for your benefit and for your good. God's not in the business of crushing you, but he is in the business of pressing you. He's not in the, in the business of tripping you up, but he is in the business of putting things in our life that allow us to mature and internalize what we know in our head into our heart. And so if you're in a moment where you feel like you're in a challenging season, you know, we're all in a challenging season, but if you feel the crushing and the pressing especially, you know, now is the time to press into faith and into the things of God rather than turn away from them. This might be the season that God's calling for endurance in our life, in our heart, and in our faith to say, you know what, Scott, I want to bring you out the other side stronger than what you started because of the challenges that you were willing to endure. And so when we ask the question, why is God testing me? You know what? He may not be testing you, but he might be maturing you. He might be growing you, and he might be revealing something new in you. You know, today we have a very special guest joining us. Uh, her name is Pastor Leah Bennett. She is an amazing pastor, amazing friend. And she is someone who understands a life marked by struggle, heartbreak, challenges, disappointment. And yet she is someone who has such an incredible faith, an incredible joy, an incredible life, because I believe that her endurance has produced this deep maturity of faith in her. I can't wait for us to hear from her. Why don't you check it out right now? Well, welcome, Leah. Thank you for joining us. And for those of you who don't know Leah, Leah, why don't you introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about yourself before we jump into it. I thought you were going to do the intro like you did for Jason Small. Let's talk about all my accolades. <laughs> Leah is a pastor, leader. She is the family ministries pastor at the People's Church in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got a great pastor's wife named Ryan. And... Uh, <laughs> She is just great. She's going to be the next district superintendent, girl <laughs> power, premier of Ontario. She could do that too. Anything else that I missed? No, she's I think a, pretty much covered it all. a beautiful new daughter named Reese. Uh, she's, she's awesome. And we wanted to interview Leah and ask Leah um, just a little bit about how to deal with disappointment and challenges and struggles because Leah's life is no stranger to uh, incredible challenges in moments of, I would say, immense pressure <laughs> that have followed both you in your family and faith. And so why don't you just take a moment and share some of your story. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. Um, so from a young age, I really had to wrestle with God about um, figuring out my faith in the midst of pain and disappointment and stuff. I watched as I grew up, um, I grew up in the church, fortunately, but I watched 
throughout my childhood and my, particularly my teenage years, my dad's health really deteriorate. He has a pretty significant um, illness that has really affected his body and his ability to do things. And so as I watched that as a teenager, I really had to start to wrestle with God and go like, okay, I'm hearing all this stuff about God is good. And if you pray and have faith, the side of a size of a mustard seed, like, you know, God will answer and he'll heal you. And he's so good. And I came to this place where I had to say like, okay, well, I'm praying, I'm believing, and I'm not seeing healing come. In fact, I'm seeing things get worse and worse and worse and affect not only physical health, but people's mental health and, you know, our family unit and all of that stuff. And so um, from a young age, I really had to wrestle with God and come to him with my doubts and my questions and my disappointment and my hurt. And fortunately, I had some good people in my life who gave me space to do that and encouraged me and pointed me to Jesus in that. And I finally, um, through Bible college and through, yeah, just these people in my life came to a place where I really felt like I could say God is faithful and good regardless of my circumstance. Um, yeah, that was, a, that took a long time to get there. Yeah. And then once I got there, um, a whole bunch of other stuff happened, <laughs> which kind of rocked my world. Uh, my sister had her first of many suicide attempts and kind of launched our family into this journey of dealing with someone who is mentally ill and pretty significantly struggling. Um, and that journey actually is continuing to this day, but through that journey, I've been a first responder to numerous suicide attempts, um, mm -hmm. been a support and been in and out of hospital caring for and doing my best to love and be there for my family and, um, yeah, just walk alongside them and full of a lot of scary and heartbreaking and disappointing and like unbelievably hard moments. Yeah, all throughout for for multiple years, kind of that was really intense. Scott knows he was kind and, of alongside Ryan and I, on and that still journey. is, and it still, still is, is that moment's very, very intense. Yeah, it still is very intense. Um, and for people who that, don't know, you, your dad's condition is that his essentially his motor functions are deteriorating over time. And yeah. so when you're saying dealing with illness, you watched him go from a more able-bodied person to a, a less able-bodied person and, and yeah. bound to a wheelchair and, and praying all the way through that. Yeah. And believing all the way through that and yet not seeing. Yeah. Not seeing for. the outcome that I thought and hoped for. Like, yeah, there were moments I can remember as a little girl, you know, going to church and hearing like, yeah, faith, the side of the mustard seed, or if you just believe mm -hmm. they can be healed. And I would go to bed. Like I can remember going to sleep, praying and being like, okay, when I wake up, he's going to be okay. Mm-hmm and it never happened and continues to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of was going on in my family. And then we also, in the midst of all that, found out some pretty disappointing news about my health um, and also began the journey of trying to have a baby, which took many more years and a lot more heartbreak and disappointment and loss and just challenging moments. Um, and we're so fortunate and thankful we have a little girl now and truly like an answer to prayer. We have our little daughter Reese, who's five months now. Um, but it was a long journey and miracle baby. Yeah. She's my little miracle baby. Totally. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just been a crazy, <laughs> it's been a crazy, I keep saying like two years. It's been a crazy, like decade i don't know it's been a crazy at least five years six years i don't know seven something like that but yeah. i was used to tease leah that she will write the world's best book one day <laughs> one day when all of this comes to a close and she can write about it uh she will have the world's best book so make sure you look out for it it's gonna be yeah. hitting amazon oh, it's gonna be so good girl power a little depressing, well, but <laughs> one of the reasons we wanted to have leah is because leah and her husband ryan uh are you know, their life has been marked by all these challenges. And yet, I, although there are moments of grief, uh, they've never really lost their joy and they've overcome. And I would say God's matured in them something stronger than comfort could. Like he has made something of them through this process. And for a lot of people, this last year has been a challenging one. And for a lot of people, maybe you and Ryan, you're like, this is nothing. We got it covered. But for a lot of people, this might be uh, the most illness or loss or disappointment or anger or pressure and challenges that they've really had to wrestle with. Life may have been 
pretty good up until now. And it can leave us asking the question, well, why me? Or why would God let this happen to me? And so what would you say to the believer and the person who is wrestling with loss and disappointment and grief? Uh, and they're asking, why would God let this happen to me? Or maybe they're even feeling forgotten by him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's natural and understandable to have those feelings. And I think that's the first thing is allow yourself to feel that. Sometimes I think as Christians, we think I can't, I just need to be like, no, God is good. God is good. And kind of suppress or like push those feelings down. That's not helpful because they're going to come back up and usually they come back up worse because you haven't dealt with it. So <laughs> I think take time to be sad and grieve and be honest mm -hmm. about the loss you're facing. Be honest about the feelings, the emotions that are coming up. Um, share with safe people. I think being, you need to be intentional about who you share those feelings with though. Like a God is big enough to handle all of our feelings. So you can yell at God, you can be mad at him. You can <laughs> cry, like whatever you need to do, God can handle it. But the people in your life around you who you're going to share those feelings with be intentional and be smart because there are people who are going to hear those things and will comfort you and point you to Jesus. And there's other people who will try to comfort you, but in doing so will actually um, kind of point you away from Jesus and be like, yeah, you're right. You don't deserve this. This is awful. Like, and can discourage your spirit in that. So totally. find good people to point you to the Lord in the middle of it be honest with God. Like, man, there was a long time where literally, and I mean, I didn't get to go to church very often because I was doing children's ministry, but if I was in worship, I like was weeping. I could not help it. Like I was so, my spirit was so broken that mm -hmm. any moment I was in the presence of the Lord, I was weeping because it was like so hard. Life was so yeah. hard that I just was so broken in front of him. But I also really try not to have the why me mindset. Like I try to, honestly, I say to myself a lot, I'm like, why not me? Like, mm. why, why do I deserve a perfect life? Why do I deserve a life without hardship? Everyone has hardship. And so it's good to remember you're not alone. Like look at the world around you. There's suffering everywhere. The reality is, is we live in a broken world and the good news is, is God is redeeming it. And yeah. He promises that one day things will be restored and redeemed and everything will be whole and good again. And we don't live there yet, which sucks. And sometimes the, the journey in the, in the middle is awful, like terrible, but he is working to redeem and restore. Yeah. And James, James tells us to consider a sheer gift. That's the message. Sinner yeah. over here reading the message, but he goes, <laughs> How dare cons you? consider a sheer gift. I only when... read King James. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get out. <laughs> when challenges come from all sides. And I think it, it's not really a great place to put yourself in the mindset of God's testing me. Yeah. And he, yeah. he kind of goes, James kind of lays it out that, that God's not two sided. He's mm -hmm. not here to see you succeed and then trying to trip you up the next. And although yeah. he may not be testing you, he, all, he might be maturing you. And, and like you're saying, there's brokenness everywhere. Yeah, there, there's can't brokenness escape everywhere. And, yeah. and just because we're believers, it doesn't mean that brokenness came from God all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there are people who do not believe who are experiencing the same trials and testing, except there's nothing being refined in them because they're doing it on their own. Yeah. And so uh, how have you seen God refine spiritual maturity in your life uh, as a result of the years of challenge that you've faced? Yeah, well, I think I've learned to put my trust and my faith in the person of God rather than my circumstances. Uh -huh. Like when the floor falls out from under you, you kind of have to figure out like, okay, where, what's, what's my foundation? What do I put my hope, my trust in? Like, cause if it's in the stuff around us, it's not going to last. So I think God has, you know, done that. I mean, I think he's, he's built like perseverance and um, just, yeah, as trust in him and an ability to say like, okay, God is with me in the middle of this. And if you're feeling, I didn't really address it earlier. If you're feeling overlooked or lost by lost and like God isn't with you, that's where I would challenge you and say he is with you. And sometimes it can be hard to see it, but look to scripture. I mean, there was a scripture I used to read in high school and I remember, and I would say it all the time. And this was like the one thing I would come to and it would just is in the Psalms. And it said, evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress and he hears my voice. 
Mm -hmm. That was it. Just knowing like God hears my voice. He is here with me. He is not the perpetrator of this evil. Like the enemy comes to kill, still steal, kill and destroy, not God, but God is with us and he is taking all those bad things and, and he is building good things out of it. Um, but I think, yeah, I think he's developed just like perseverance and a trust in, in God, like in his goodness, regardless of what's going on. So when things are hard, I can still, I can be sad. Like just because I trust in God does not mean I don't have days where I'm really sad. Or I, I think that's I'm important because I think sometimes you feel like our emotions betray our faith. Yeah, no, not at all. Like, I mean, you, Scott and Michaela can attest to this. Like they were good friends to us in the midst of some really hard stuff. And it was a gift to be able to go over to their house back when you could do that. And, um, <laughs> and like cry, cry with them and be like, things are so hard, but mm -hmm. then also laugh and have fun. And I think that's the other thing is sometimes we think life is either like, you're really sad or you're happy. And it's not it's that kind of both. <laughs> it's kind of both. You have to be able to hold both you know, hand in hand and, and be sad and be honest and allow God to meet you in the middle of that. Totally. I don't know. I don't think that answered your question. But. I think it does. It's good. Like, you know, there are moments where I think people are in the middle of, and, and the challenges we face today are legitimate, but they're also not long-term. Mm, That's kind of yeah. what I come back around to is I'm like, this isn't forever. Yeah. And so as someone who has been in through long-term trial, what would you say to someone um, who does not see the end in sight, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's their grief or disappointment, it's just clouded their ability to see past their current situation. How would you encourage them? How would you have wanted to be encouraged in the moments that you were in that position? Yeah. Well, I know what that feels like. I mean, honestly, in the journey we're in, it still feels like that sometimes, like there's a lot of things that we're facing um ryan and i and as a family that there really is no end in sight it's kind of like okay we're just gonna keep trucking along um but if you feel that if you're feeling that like i said before surround yourself with people who will speak truth and hope to you um who will affirm your feelings but also point you to jesus and point you to the goodness and look for the good and look for god in the midst of it uh -huh. so you know Ryan and I play a game like, and it's so dumb, but we count our blessings. And when we're like having a bad day, we're like, give me 10. And we, make each, 10. Other, we make each other list like 10 blessings ten things that are good in our life. And honestly, sometimes it's like ketchup chips and <laughs> <laughs> amen. Revival in the kitchen. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, you know, it's, and well, obviously then sometimes you get to like family and whatever, but centering your mind on like the good that's around you because there is still good is important um and look read stories and read the bible and stories where there's bigger picture where you can see god's enduring faithfulness over hardship like the story of joseph is always so encouraging to me yeah because man when he was living that i can't imagine right like we re look at the story and we're like yeah he was in jail yeah, yeah. But then he was this <laughs> then he was the ruler of the land they're like spoilers yeah, Let's yeah, <laughs> sorry. If you haven't read that, I recommend it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what'll happen, uh, <laughs> but you know, be encouraged in that way. And something that was helpful to me was like a friend of mine um, who really walked through everything with me. She got me a necklace and it said hope on it. And that was like every day I would put on that necklace and I literally would put on hope and I'd be like, okay, God, I'm going to hope and trust that you are in the midst of this and you are going to make good things and know that and people probably don't want to hear this, but know that even if things are not resolved in your lifetime, we can ultimately hope mm. in the redemption and restoration of the world. Yeah. And I think that's a challenge. I would, I am with you, but I, I understand why people aren't. Yeah. And, and you know, the gift of salvation is in a future. And yeah. I've kind of come to understand that every blessing I've received now is a kindness and a mercy Yeah, in a lot Truly, of ways. It's important, honestly, to, to change your mindset, I think, to like, wow, I get to be alive. Wow, I get to have 
goodness in my life. I, you know, like I said before, why not me? Like why, what's so special about me that I deserve a pain-free life? Mm -hmm. Why do I deserve it? As opposed to someone who was born into a different country, into a different land with, you know, a different family, different hardship. And so kind of reminding yourself like of the good things in your life and the blessings that you do have and, and that we live in the now and the not yet like that. I don't know if yeah. people have heard that term often. We talk about it a lot in Bible college, but you know, we live in this in-between place where God has Jesus like rose again, but he hasn't returned a final time to make the world as it should be. And so in the meantime, yeah. there's going to be suffering and expect brokenness, yeah. like I, yeah. which is, is a really hard thing. If we've maybe subscribed to the fact that now that I've followed Jesus, there will be no more brokenness. Yeah, and you that... know, there, there's personal healing, but there's a healing of our world that has not happened. Mm -hmm. and, and we get to be a part of it. Totally we do, but yeah. to not expect like every time that someone like, I don't know, a system or a person or people let someone down. And sometimes it can feel like people, it's a shock. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. I, not to be cynical, but like, what were we expecting? Like, yeah. what were we expecting for people and peoples and systems that are imperfect? Yeah. And in the, the middle of it, never... yeah. And in the middle of it, like you kind of get to discover God in a brand new way. Mm -hmm. A lot more, I would challenge to say a lot more mature way when mm -hmm. God doesn't redeem it in the way you think he should. Mm -hmm. And there's a season where you walk where you can't really see him all that clearly. And then you kind of get a glimpse and a picture of where God is in the middle of it. And it's a brand new way of understanding him. Mm -hmm. Like even moments that we've uh, been with your family and trying to figure it out and seeing just in weird ways while wow, God provided here yeah, in some ways that you'd be like, I, maybe you could have gone bigger. Like, and yet, <laughs> and yet it, it doesn't make it less of a miracle. Yeah. And I think those moments where we begin to see God move, even in still small ways, um, they reveal more of his character to us and his consistency. Mm -hmm. And I think we lose sight of his consistency a lot of the time. Yeah. And especially right now, as people are, probably at the end of their rope. Um, I think our responsibility is to remain consistent. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, there's nothing else I can do. There's nothing I can do to solve this problem. The only thing I can try to do is be consistent yeah. in my character and who I know Jesus has made me to be, or he's trying to make me to be and to overcome disappointment with faith, essentially. Yeah. Like to try yeah. and push back it with faith. That, yeah, that's exactly it. When you're faced in those moments and, you know, sometimes choosing to have faith is like as simple as just getting onto bed and doing the next right thing, yeah. feeding, your, feeding yourself a good breakfast and like <laughs> calling your mom or whatever it is. And that's faith and going like, I'm just going to believe that God is in the middle of this and he, he has not abandoned us. Yeah. And we're recording this. We recorded everything else for the podcast before, but since we record all that other stuff, we're now in our third lockdown, super stay at home order thing. And mm -hmm. um, I think people are pretty angry. And the first thing that goes is my reliance on God when I get yeah. angry or like that calm, you know what I mean? Like that when the presence of God in your life creates that calm to be more like Jesus, that's normally the first thing to go. And so I think I, I, if I can brag on Ryan and Leah, I think they're people who have been really good at maintaining the calm in the middle of some pretty challenging circumstances and everybody's allowed to have their moments. And yet I think consistency and faith and just taking a deep breath and seeing God in the middle of our frustration, it, mm -hmm. it protects that character that we're work, trying to work on. And they've been people that I've seen in situations much harder than what we find ourselves in uh, really excel and come out the other side as stronger believers and stronger people and better examples of Jesus. And so as we go into this next season of th people hate this, or they're frustrated about this, or I, X, Y, Z, uh, I think the challenge is what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Right? Like, what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Even in our faith, let's just, just what would Jesus do about it? Is he going to tear down the people around him just to get the venting out, maybe find the people you can vent with, but don't forsake the kingdom he's built in your heart for 
the opinions you have in your head, yeah, <laughs> so totally. to speak, like it's not worth it. And I think yeah, you're and right I, to say now and not yet. Yeah. And I heard someone say the other day, I was listening to a podcast um, and they were saying, throw the world's smallest, shortest pity party. So like, if you need to have a pity party, go ahead and have it, but don't live there. Yeah. Throw one, have a small one and then move on and, and look for the good and look for, look for God in the midst of it and see how you can be a blessing and yeah, experience Jesus in the midst of it. So that's your challenge. Throw yourself a pity party. Go get Dairy Queen. Don't go whatever yeah. whatever you need to do. Yeah. Go throw yourself a little pity party. I think I already threw myself a pity party today, but I'll get a second one. We went to Starbucks and oh, there got you go. cake pops. Oh, look at us. Ooh, now <laughs> Which, we're talking. That's just a ball of cake. So I feel like that's a pity party in and of itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you find yourself in the place where you're at the end of your rope, ask your, throw yourself the pity party and ask, now what am I going to do about it? I think that's a good question. What am I going to do about it? And mm -hmm. what is God going to do about it in me is maybe a better question to give ourselves a personal challenge. Well, thank you, Leah, for joining us. It's always a pleasure. We're going to have to have you back to talk about something else because yeah. Leah is just wise in many <laughs> different ways. And I've uh, harassed him. <laughs> She's paid me to say that, and uh, I could use another I'll send Amazon gift card. Later. Oh, cake pop! Look at that, Gail. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you, Leah, for joining us, and for everybody else, we're gonna go back to the cast. All right, thank you. Well, thank you, Leah, for joining us and being willing to share her story, and so thankful to have her to share her wisdom and her insight. And you know, it made me begin to think about. Um, what God has done instead of focusing on what he hasn't done yet. So I wanted to ask our cast and ourselves tonight, how has God strengthened your faith uh, in some of the hard seasons of your life? Just from your own experience, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like this dramatic, I used to live on the streets and I was addicted to drugs and now I'm Billy Graham. It doesn't need to be that. It can be something just simple, like the simple miracles that God does to you. It doesn't have to be something crazy, but how has God strengthened your faith in some of the hard seasons of your life? Um, for me personally, uh, I think uh, one of the, the times in my life where God really, um, like I, I needed my faith to be the center of everything that uh, I was thinking and doing. And I think that would be probably around the time when my parents got divorced, probably like that was kind of like a, uh, a time in my life where I just really needed to rely on God and like yeah. see the bigger picture, see the, the, mm -hmm. like see him working through it in a way, which is so hard. And even still to this day, like I'm trying to figure it out. But, um, I think that definitely, that was a time in my life where I, uh, I had to get closer to God. Yeah. And I think your life now is evidence of what he did then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's showing, uh, and, and if I could say the biggest takeaway, uh, from that, I would say it is, um, how to show love through everything, no matter what, uh, right. no matter how I was treated, no matter how my parents were treating each other, God's big picture through that whole situation was just love one another. And first Corinthians 13, that was like the highlight verse, uh, that got me through, um, kind of the whole situation and, uh, just strengthened my faith. It, it, it was just learning how to love people. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, Jack. Yeah. Uh, for me, like, don't need to get into a whole, like, like whole, right. We were talking about before getting it down to the radio edit, but through, you know, a couple years ago with my accident, uh, God saved me from that, you know, through dad's whole cancer journey, uh, mm -hmm. through even recently just going through some health stuff. Um, what God's taught me through the hard times is that um, our hard times can be used to impact others. It can mm -hmm. just showing that like, yeah, like this situation sucks and it's hard, but the only way I've gotten through or I'm getting through it is through trusting in God and through like the recent like health stuff I've been going through, just dealing with stuff from my accident, head stuff and other things. Like I've really just been, I've been trying to read like a Psalm a day, Psalm a night, you know, read a proverb, listening to a lot of worship and just praying and saying in good community, like mm -hmm. TYL, like mm -hmm. in TYL. Um, but it's, it's true. And I think that's the thing that we really need to do in these hard times. And, and when people see situations like a car accident or losing people, um, and you're still doing pretty good, the only reason is they got forgot. And that's an opportunity to show God's glory and it can be a real testimony. 
Yeah, and I I have the privilege of beating Joe probably a month or so before he pa- Joe is Jake's dad before he passed away. And unbelievable man of faith. You Just, want to tell that story quick when you went in? Yeah. Uh, we we came to the hospital. I came to see Jake and pray with his dad and coming in his dad was not necessarily in the best health and very uncomfortable and uh he was going on about how someone else at young life was inspired by his faith that god was still going to heal and do amazing things and he was literally brought to the point of tears being like well you know if that young man was encouraged by my story of faith like praise god like yeah. like that so cool. like uh, just amazing like that i remember is, that to this day that was an amazing moment yeah. of Incredible. You know, I mean, like even in really hard seasons, God in his life, especially just had matured something, had taken that struggle and birthed something that just, it was amazing. And yeah. we all got to benefit from it. It was oh, amazing. It's literally so crazy. Just really quickly like that. He's that's really inspired me. Cause even to the end, he's like, man, I'm excited to go see Jesus and all that, but I'm worried about you guys. So I want you guys to like mm-hmm. stick close to God and all that. And even to the end, yeah, he was just about like, if my story can impact anybody, that's that makes it worth it that's amazing elliot what about you what's just a moment when Uh, your faith has been strengthened through a hard season oh it's definitely my transition out of high school into this young adulting uh (laughs) yeah it was it was definitely tough just figuring out who i was as an individual and just what i wanted to do with my life and plugging myself into because the idea that i had was that a lot of my problems I, I, I didn't know how to like separate myself from a certain situation and learning how to just let the situation deal with itself and me trying to be the fixer of everything. That was my biggest problem. And one of the things I learned when plugging myself into a church and also having good people around me who kept me accountable and helped me journey through life uh, was the fact that I had a, a better relationship with God that I was able to establish myself and know the things that I am called to do. But at the same time, I am able to just like me for me. That was one of the biggest things mm-hmm. learning is yeah, transitioning sure. from out of there. And so um, definitely that helped me strengthen my faith with God and, and just be happy with me. That was one of the biggest things I learned in transitioning out of from high school to kind of being more of an, an adult in the real world. Yeah, that's challenging. Like that's yeah. that's like mm-hmm. the and for many of even people listening tonight, like that's still a huge shift. And like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I I I have found it's it's not that it's not that there's no light at the tunnel, but there's always a new there's always a new thing. Like yeah. a mentor in my life, he's say another level, another devil, and uh-huh. the, like the same thing happened like when we got married, and it was like and the same thing happens now. We have a kid, and like. That, that sometimes the challenges of like wrestling through God, what would you have me to do? And am I okay mm-hmm. with who I am? Like I remember when I came through Bible college, a, a challenging season of my first two years in Bible college, like, like it was hard. Like it was really, really hard. Like to the end, I was resisting and, and uh, it, it was not going well. It was certainly not going well. And a mentor came into my life and kind of like took responsibility for me. That's kind of how it, the point that it got to was like, I'll be responsible for this person if you let them stay. Mm -hmm. But I remember feeling like the pressure and the pressing and, you know, that was a scenario where the the God was doing something in that and through that. And Mm -hmm. for many of us, you know, James talks about don't prematurely try to get out of anything uh, because, you know, God may not be testing you, but it doesn't mean he's not maturing you. And sometimes we like to say, well, God, because this is happening, you must be doing this so that I can be matured. And, you know, James cautions us to say, hey, uh, God's not two-faced. He's not fickle. He's not playing the field here. Like he won't mature you through really challenging seasons, but he's not there to try and trip you up. He's not there to try and make you fail. He's not there to try and make you look foolish. And so, you know, tonight, as we go tonight, if you're in a challenging season and you're listening tonight and you're like, yeah, it's, it's been really hard. Take yeah. heart in understanding that right. God is maturing something in you as we respond and lean into him in this moment. And, yeah. you know, nothing lasts forever. That has been the thing, even through this uh, lockdown season, nothing lasts forever. This is a short-term problem. This is a short-term problem. And, you know, I, I push back on people who are trying to turn this into a long-term problem because I, full of faith and fully believing, you know, 
this is a short term problem. Totally. Amen. And the challenges yeah. that come as a result of that, they're also short term problems. And so when we believe in faith that God is maturing us, he's using us, he's holding us and he's guiding us, you know, I can, mm -hmm. I can face another day in a short term problem. Yeah. I can face another day and another conversation, another frustration in, in something that's not going to be forever. And as a result of it, hopefully, hopefully God's maturing something in me. Uh, he's yeah. teaching me something new. He's, he's using that pressing and the crushing and the things that are uncomfortable to make something new out of me. And I know he's definitely making it something new at the people watching at home. And so tonight, as we go, our question of the week, how has God strengthened your faith in a hard season? What is God something? What is something that God has done in you as a result of you going through a really challenging season of your faith? We'd love to hear about it. Email me at sburtonmbw.church. We'll also have it on Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. But uh, more than that, we'd like to pray with you. Uh, if you are really in a, a tricky sure. place and you just need someone to talk to, we are always available here at the Young Life to reach out and to walk with it through you and to pray with you and connect with you. And so we definitely want to do that. And tonight as we go, uh, I want us to pray together, if that's okay, for people who are just in a challenging season. So can we pray together? Let's close our eyes. Let's, God, let's say thank you tonight that, God, in the midst of challenges and trials and testing and things that are uncomfortable, God, you use them to mature us and, and birth something new out of us that comfort couldn't. God, you, you create and challenge what comfort couldn't. And so, God, tonight I pray for people who are heartbroken and dealing with loss and dealing with frustration and disappointment. And, God, I pray that you it infuse Amen. joy in knowing that, God, you are using this season and these moments, that, God, nothing is wasted in your kingdom. And so, God, I just pray blessing and patience that they know they're not alone, they're not forgotten. <laughs>